Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this morning's study. So we're going to continue looking at Daniel 11, verse 14, 15, 16. And this is taking quite a while, but uh, we're going to ask God to be here in this study. So can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the time that we have this morning uh, to open your word together. And we invite your spirit to speak to our hearts and to help us with the struggles that we have each day. Uh, we pray for wisdom and understanding and we pray for those watching these videos that your Holy Spirit can touch them. Um, we need your presence every hour and we ask for your presence now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. And uh, new study for this week. Of course, um, uh, tomorrow is a significant date. It's one of the dates on our lines. Uh, December 25th, 2023. Does anybody remember where we got that date? December 25th, 2023. Anybody remember how that date showed up on our lines. Do you remember why we why we placed that date there? Nobody remembers? A little bit early for me right now after driving, so my mind is just not yet focused. Okay. So we had noted from September 11th, 2001 to December 25th, 2023 is 8,141 days. So that's the Hebrew number. H4, H141, and H141 is, or 8141, H8141. Does anybody remember what that word is? It's the word years, right? And it's going to show up in uh, Daniel 11, verse 6, Daniel 11, verse 8, and Daniel 11, verse 13, right? Where it says, he shall certainly come after certain years. And then we took this certain years. And so the word certain, of course, is the same word that's translated as times, 6256. And we added it to 8141. And then we added 360 to it. So we took six, six times two times five times six, which is 360. So that's the word certain or times, which is a symbol of the, the prophetic year. And we added it to it. And when we did that, um, what ended up happening? Anybody know? So we know that it's a little bit over 40 years, like if we took it as a span of time. So where did that bring us to? Anybody remember? Or what did we do with that? Pardon me. So we, so we took this, um, 14757, and it's 40 years and 147 days. Anybody remember what we did with that? I'm trying to remember. So I don't remember what we did with that. Um, I, so. If anybody can remember, but we had that number um, and we applied it in some way. I know that when we added, let's see, what did we do here? You guys are supposed to remember all this. Anyway, I was focusing, we'll come back to that later. Uh, what I was focusing on here is the fact that tomorrow is the end of this line. So we have this December 25th, 2023. Now, together, they mark a period of 14,397 days. And it says, oh, I have it here. If we include the symbolism from H256, we have a period of 14,757 days, which is the number of days from November 9th, 1989 to April 5th, 2030. Oh, there we are. So, okay. So that that's where it is. So is that significant? Okay, so... So we have this December 25th, 2023 date. So here I'm going to go here. I'll show you all this. I'll go to this calendar converter thing. So we're going to go back to November 9th, 1989. And 
this is going to be, um, well, I'll put that date there. So I'll save that. And then we'll go to 2001. It's going to be September 11th. And then we'll go to April 5th, 2030. So we're going to save all of these in our line. Okay. And uh, that's about what I wanted was also December. So tomorrow, we'll put tomorrow in there. Okay. Now, um, so we can see we have this, um, the number of days from September 11th to December 25th in inclusive count is 8140. So I'm just going to make this a little bigger. All right, so you can see that there. Then you can see this is the number of days. So we got um, uh, these two numbers plus 360. Right, so that's going to be eight four eight one four one plus three sixty plus six two five six. So that's going to give us that total. Now, in understanding these things, so understanding these Hebrew numbers, they're going to give us these dates. Now, this was from uh, verse. Um, so where's this here? Just trying to see. So that was from verse 13, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So this is after certain years. So they, and she'll certainly come after certain years. So the, the response was, um, this is, well, this is dealing with the Battle of Paneum, right? So this is the response to atheistic communism. And it's going to come after certain years. So that certain years, as a symbol, uh, brings us to April 5th, 2030. But it also brings us to the start um, or, or to, you know, this date be dealing with September 11th to December 25th, uh, 2023. So it brings us to this date. So we're saying that this uh, response, this is the, the, from the start of the Fifth Syrian War, that we're in this time of the Fifth Syrian War, and that there's this, this response to atheistic communism, and that it's, it says, shall certainly come after certain years. So that, that years is going to bring us to tomorrow, right? Uh, the certain and the years together, are going to mark April 5th, 2030. Now, we also have in the next verse and in those times. So there we're going to have um, a period of time that is, um, so when we deal with those times, we add 6256 plus 1992, and that goes from uh, 911 to April 10th, 2024, right? So we also have another first day of the first month coming up in April. So that's going to be there. So I'm going to, let me see here. So that's, that's also a count from 9-11. So we got another date coming up. Now, really, there's kind of two dates that are going to be there. I'm just going to put this one here. That's going to be the eclipse. And then we're going to have Nissan 1. Okay. So we can see here we have these symbols. From today, April 10th, 2024 is going to be 107 days. That symbolizes the 10th day of the seventh month. To the eclipse, it's going to be 105 days, which symbolizes the 10th day of the fifth month. And then we're going to have uh, a period of time from the first day of the first month in 2024 to the first day of the first month in uh, 2030. Now, we can see there it says 2,186. So that's a cardinal count. As an ordinal count, it's going to be 2,187 days. So we have that symbol 
of July 18, 2020. Okay, so so now we have these things, right? This is we we spent a lot of time looking at these symbols, and there's a lot more numerical symbols. The question is, what do we do with this? What is its significance? Why are we spending all of our time dealing with all of these numbers and dates when we're not time setters? Right? We're not trying to predict, predict any event. Uh, so why are we doing this? What is it that we're trying to understand about our history? What is we, we trying to understand about Daniel chapter 11? Why is this important? You know, I read criticisms on on some of the comments on, on YouTube from people who have some who have been following the studies a little bit. Some who followed us in the past. Uh, there is a brother. Um, Charles is his first name. And he's going to make a comment, which I don't know how to pronounce his last name. But he says, I've been following you up until July 18. Since then, I've had a hard time listening to you. Well, I think I'd have a hard time listening to me, too. Uh, anyway, I've come to learn that a lot of pastors hold new criticism about the FFA and all the Jeff group on grounds of lack of Christ-centeredness in your prophecy studies. That your work sounds so academic and less salvation. Now, what is that kind of comment? What is that? What does that really mean? Um, now, would we say that what we do is not Christ-centered? I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what that would mean. H- how, do, how does how is something more Christ-centered and something less Christ-centered? What would make what would make it more Christ-centered? Too many of these people are looking that in order for something to be Christ-centered, that it needs to be almost like pablum. Okay, well, yeah, so they want to talk about Christ. So we talk about the life of Christ or something to do with Christ. Now, does every verse of Scripture have to do something with Christ? Yes. Yes, because Christ spoke. It's his word, right? And so I would hear people saying, well, you know, we need to be more Christ-centered. This 2,300 days, the 70 weeks, I mean, the 70 weeks has part of it that we might say is Christ-centered, you know, because Christ is going to be crucified in the midst of the week. But, you know, it's not really important to spend time studying that. You know, we need to know more about the love of Christ, his salvation. And, and of course, those things are important, right? The, the first principles of the oracles of God. They're, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them pablum. I would call them more milk, right? Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. But there is a point in which milk is for babes, right? And that we need to have solid food. Paul talks about this in the book of Hebrews, right? right. Um, so, so we know that, that the scriptures, and we've read statements yesterday, about studying the scriptures and the things that we have to dig for, the things that are actually going to help us to grow, to become less selfish, less worldly, right? There are things that we can study that that are, are things that we have to dig for. They're the things that are hidden in God's word. Now, the question is, why has God done that? I mean, why is the Bible written in the way that it is? Why did Jesus speak in parables? We know that we're sinners, right? And God is seeking to save us and to increase our faith in him. Jesus says, I've told you things before they come to pass, that when they come to pass, you may believe that I am he, right? The purpose of prophecy, for instance, is not so that we will be in the know about what's going to happen, but that when things happen, we can see that God has led in that, that he has foreseen those events. And it puts our faith and confidence in God to, for what's going to come upon the earth that we are uncertain about. Because things are coming that the only way we can be prepared for them is by being trusting in what God is doing in our lives. 
And so much of what's happening within this world, within Christianity, within Seventh-day Adventism, and within this movement, is that the focus has not been upon learning to trust God. In fact, when God had been leading us in the July 18, 2020 prediction, the call comes that we need to repent because our prediction was wrong. Does that that make any sense? No. So if our prediction was wrong, then the foundation upon which we made that prediction was wrong, and that we would have to reject that foundation, right? Correct. Yeah. And we would have to reject the idea that God was even leading us. And at what point do we decide that God was leading us and not leading us? Now, we could try to go back and say, well, the moment we tried to time set, that's when God stopped leading us. Okay. Now, of course, we believe that God's been leading us before that. And before that, God was leading us and saying that we're repeating Millerite history. Now, since we don't see anything like that in Millerite history, could we, could we be, would we be consistent in saying, well, we're repeating Millerite history, but not in this instance? Would that be consistent? If July 18, 2020 was wrong and not a repetition of Millerite history, then our, our premise that we're repeating Millerite history would have to be suspect, right? Now, of course, the repetition of Millerite history comes from the understanding in the spirit of prophecy and the understanding of Millerite history itself. So as we go back, as we start to, if we reject the light that God has given us, like July 18th, and and don't know how to understand it, that it was meant to correct us. It was meant to lead us to repentance, right? So the very thing that was meant to lead us to repentance, we don't repent of. The thing that exposed to us our need of Christ is not the thing that we repent of. So there is, when Jeff tries to say that this was, you know, the sin, um, he calls it, what does he call it? Um, the sin of July 18, 2020, that we need to, um, and he says that he's primarily responsible for it because uh, once he put determined to put it into writing, what had been open to me since the sin of July 18, 2020. And then place it into the public record before I was laid to rest. So this, so in this, um, this is the, the article where he talks about, um, uh, the message of Nashville on July 18, 2020 was a corrupted offering of the priest. So he tries to compare this to Malachi 3, verse 3 and 4. Of course, we know that that's a mis, misapplication of those verses, especially if we believe that we're paralleling Millerite history. Now, if we don't believe we're paralleling Millerite history, well, then we have to go much further back than to 2013 to say that we were in error. We'd have to go back to the beginning of this message. When we look at the logic that's being employed presently, people question why I, I don't understand it. And, and the thing is, it's not logical. When somebody presents something that's irrational, not logical, based upon emotion usually. You can't make sense out of it. Now, it may make sense to that person. That person may feel that the conclusion that they've drawn fits, but they're not thinking about it logically when they do that. Right? So, so we have this situation where God has given us this light and he's given it to us so that we can have faith and confidence in a time where everything will appear to be against us right if we come to a dis- if we come to a disappointment and things don't happen the way that we think that they should and we we create this habit of doing this you know we we trust in god for a bit we expect something some result That result doesn't happen. And so, well, God obviously wasn't leading me, right? 
So, so I need to repent of that. And then we do it again. There are people like this who keep following different movements within Adventism. Right. So they're following one idea and then, you know, they get disappointed by who's ever leading them and then they go follow another group and some other idea. Are they going to be able to stand in the time of trouble when everything goes wrong? No. No, right? If God is leading us, there should be a consistent leading in our lives from the time we first accepted Christ. There should be this natural progression of light that has been unfolded to us. Now, there are times that God corrects us, right? But when God corrects us, does it undo everything that he had been doing before in our lives? No, it doesn't. No. So it exposed to, uh, exposes to us our sin, something that, that has been there that we've, we've seen but we've ignored. So, so we come to a, a point, we say, you know, we, we start banging our head against the wall or whatever, you know, keep repeating something that, that's not working because there's something in us that God has been trying to show us. And when, when that is understood, doesn't it make what's happened before clearer, right? Isn't there just a clear path we can see? I can see how God was leading me to this point purposefully, and it gives us more confidence to move ahead, right? We should have all experienced this. We learn a hard lesson, and now we have more confidence in God's leading in in the future because we have confidence of God's leading in the past. So God has shown us things. Now, there's a lot of subjectivity to, you know, to human nature. So there are people who will believe something for a long time. You know, they, they might be a Seventh-day Adventist for 40 years and something happens. They have a conflict in the church. They have a divorce. Something occurs in their life and, and they then renounce everything that they believed. Right. I've, I've seen it happen. That friends, it's happened to. Everything that I believed was wrong. But if you ask for a reason, do they have a reason for it? They, they might have a reason, which would be some kind of emotional reason, or they might have some kind of little reason. But have they reasoned it out? Can they explain? Well, you know, God was leading me all along this way, uh, but he was leading me in the wrong direction. No, they would have to say all of this that happened was not of God. If they're even going to hold on to God. Right? An example I gave, you know, my best friend when he left Adventism and became an atheist. Right. And I was excited to hear his reasons. Uh, I thought there must be some good intellectual reason that he had. But there was no intellectual reason at all. It was, it was purely emotional. So, so God leads. God's led, led his church. Right? And we see so many people within Adventism who reject the foundation of Adventism. They, they, they do this on a sort of more corporate scale. Adventism was wrong. You know, it was wrong to you know, to be so legalistic in the past, or it was wrong to focus so much on, on time prophecies, right? You know, and, and it was okay for then, I guess, you know, you know, cause God had to, you know, bring people out of the darkness of, you know, the 1800s, um, you know, into the 20th century of the wonderful, you know, humanistic world we live in. But you see the point, they have to reject really the foundation of something. So if we have built on a foundation and that, and it's consistent, everything that we have studied is consistent with that foundation. You can't reject it without rejecting the foundation, right? So back to the question. So we have all of these numbers, right? 
lots of them. I, I'm trying to keep track of all of them. I'm trying to put them all in order um, so that I can have a nice chart of it all. But what are these numbers telling us about Daniel chapter 11 and about us? Can anybody sort of put that into, uh, you know, encapsulate it for us? Okay, Daniel 11, verse 14. Have what we studied here in Daniel 11, verse 14, supported the pioneer understanding of Daniel 11, verse 14? Rome establishes the vision. Have we established yes, it, it? supported it. Right, and we've established that in various ways, right? One is... Um, we could connect these various histories together. We could see, for instance, in the Hebrew numbers, whether anybody believes our present truth application or not, we can see that, for instance, the word uh, chazon, I'm trying to find this here. Where's, looks like I have a typo there. No, I don't. Okay. So uh, the word chazon, that's that number 2377. You know, it marks this 2520 from 723 BC to 1798 to represent the two desolating powers, right? So when we look at that word, 2377, what did we find out about it? We Well, one is we looked at it, we could see both the 2300 days and the 70 weeks in there, right? So you could say, you know, a simple way of looking at this is if we take the word kazon, um, it's got the number 2,300 days in it, right? And then, so you just take the first two digits and you just take the the zeros there, right? But then you could say there's also a 70 and there's a 7, right? So is the does the word kazon hold that both the the 25 or the 2300 days and the 70 weeks in it. That is, does the the 2520 contain the 2300 days and the 70 weeks? Are the 70 weeks and the 2300 2300 days both different portions of the same great prophetic period? I would think they would be. Yeah. Okay. So. So this is something we already know. So we can look at the Hebrew number Chazon, and then we can also see it's a period of, of six years, 186 days. Now, 186 days is the cardinal count from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. So, so we, we can see that clearly. Now, we can also look at the robbers of thy people, right? So we looked up the word robbers, and we found... You know, it's in Jeremiah 7:11, which is a symbol of July 18. And then um, we looked at where it's quoted in the New Testament in Matthew 21:13, Mark 11:17, uh, Luke 19:46, and John 2:16. And that all of those verse numbers are connected to our lines. They connect it to July 18th. They connect it to the 7/7 structure. They connect to March 23rd, the symbol for the Levites. They connect to the prophetic year, the 19 and the 46, which is the 65 years. And then also 216, which is six times six times six, right? Okay. So, so we looked at these things. Uh, we looked at a son that is a robber, right? So that's the robber of thy people, a shedder of blood, right? And, and we found that was in the verse, um, uh, I can't remember which book. We we put the 8, 10 there. I think it's Jeremiah 18, verse 10. Or Ezekiel 18, verse 10. Pardon me. Right? There it is. Right there. So we had, to, had this 8, 10. And we know that's part of the calculation for the 2300 days. So, and it also connects, of course, to the 2520. Seven month, 10th day. You know. All these different things. So we have all of these symbols here. So why are they here? What is it that we're supposed to do with them? Supposed to what to do? What application? 
Yeah, I didn't quite hear what you said. In this kind of a situation, aren't we supposed to take these symbols and see how they would fit in lines of what we've already understood that is going to happen? Okay, yeah, I'm having a hard time hearing you. You're a little muffled, but so the, the, the idea is we take what we already understand. So we already understood a lot of this without these numbers, but we see that we can also make an application of them to our time because of the parallel of history. So, so to me, these numbers that we have used, just even in this way where we just looked at these words and these verses and, and so forth, we can see that they are symbols, that these are solid. They fit in with what we already have understood about these verses. But they also tie to our history. And so with these verses, as we, we've been studying them for quite a while, um, we know that Greece, the history of Greece, these civil wars, they parallel um, our history. They tie us to all these civil wars between the North and the South. And, and we saw that clearly, right? And then we also know that um, that we have different applications for Rome exalting itself to establish the vision. We know that this is going to happen in this history in connection with um, the Battle of, of Paneum, right? So Rome is going to exalt itself. And we already had applied that to our history. Jeff had applied it to our history with Reagan and, and the Pope, right? And so we know that we can look at this. We can see this connection. So, so what happened with the United States making this league with Rome in our history, in this Rome exalting itself to establish the vision? Um, that 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 is there is a parallel there, and we could connect that to to the beginning of Rome being another line, which is what we're going to be looking at. So we're still finishing off Greece, but at the same time we're starting off Rome as a parallel. So we had Medo Persia. We could look at the history of Medo Persia. We could see how it connected uh, to our history. We looked at Greece, and we're now looking at the end of Greece, dealing with the Sunday law and so forth. So these verses here that deal with Raphi and Paneum and then the Sunday law, these are all at the end of Greece. But it's also the beginning of Rome. So we have these connections. And we could connect it to our lines, to way marks and dates in our lines that are part of a structure. You know, the to, to question is whether this is Christ-centered or not. What it is doing for us is it is increasing our faith and confidence in God. It's helping us in the trials that we are presently in. Right? In the mess that we see around us, whether on a national level, world level, international level, or on a personal level, or within this movement. All of those levels, we need faith. And, and that faith is in Christ. It's not in numbers. Our faith is not in chronology. Our faith is not even in prophecy. Our faith is in the God of prophecy, the God of numbers, the God of chronology. Right? That's what happens when we use these dates. Now, there are people who use numbers uh, to exalt self. Right? People use prophecy to exalt self. People use the gospel to exalt self. They use religion as a cloak. Those things all exist. But that's not the purpose of any of these things. They're meant to humble us, to bring us into a connection with Christ, a trusting connection with Christ. Okay, so now as we move on to verse 15. We deal with this symbol of the king of the north, right? So right away, we, we're, we're in this king. This is the end of the king of the north and the king of the south battles. 
for Greece. Now, of course, Rome is going to become the king of the north, right? That's going to happen, right? So we know that happens in verse 16. There's going to power that's going to do according to his will. That's going to be the papacy. He's going to come in and in 191 BC, which is midnight, right? He's going to subjugate Syria and become the next king of the north. Now, this is Rome. In our history, it's the papacy. Syria represents the U.S. in this time. But but the idea here is that Rome subjugates Syria, Syria becomes the next king of the north. And and that king of the north is, is Rome in both its phases, right? In our history, uh, I put the papacy gets the Sunday law. Um, I don't know if that's the best way to say it. But anyway, and then pagan Rome under Pompey the Great shall stand in the glorious land. That's going to be 63 BC. So we can see the parallel to our history here in this, um, these verses, right? So that's, that is ending. We can, we can apply what's happening here that it's ending Greece and it's beginning Rome. And, and so we can look at it as our lines is ending with the Sunday law, but also beginning our lines, right? So that is uh, the basic idea. And I've been trying to figure out how to illustrate this, how to draw this out. But is there any questions about this? Does this seem clear to people? Okay, so let's just finish up some of these, uh, the things in red. So when we look at uh, the king of the north, Antiochus III, the republicanism of the U.S., right, shall come. So now we put there April 5th, 2030. Now, why did we put uh, 200 B.C. as April 5th, 2030? We have a good reason for putting April 5th, 2030 there. Well, it's the first day of the first month, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's the first day of the first month. But why are we saying that that's when uh, the king of the north uh, shall come and count up a mount, cast up a mount, and begin this persecution that parallels uh, Paneum? Why, why are we putting that as April 5th, 2030? Okay, so I know you can't see the footnotes there. So we know it, it produces 30 years and... Uh, 4.26 hours. So 11, 2, 5, 6. So where do we put 30 years? Did we put that at 9, 11. Well, no, not really. We put it at 11, 9. Okay. So this is, let me see here. I'm just trying to figure out what I did. So 11, 2, 5, 6. I think I might have. Yeah, so it's 30 years. Oh, and, and pardon me, it's, um, so how did I do that? So it's 30 years plus a bit, right? So if I take off the 30, I don't know if I, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. So I was looking at the one below. So that didn't make point eight one seven two. So I'm going to do this right here. Minus 30 equals. Okay, so this is 30 years and 298 or 299 days. Now, we put this, so the 30 years symbolizes from November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2019. And then we have this remainder. So when we go to 1989 and we count um, 11,256, it's going to bring us to September 3rd, 2020. But we said, well, that doesn't bring us to any significant date. But if we go from the end of that period, so we're going to go from December 25th, 1991, and we're going to count that number of days, where do we come to? We come to October 19th. Okay. Anybody remember? What we do. I know Iran remembers. So the phrase, the king of the north. Right, that's what we see down here. I didn't need a quotation there. 11, 
256. So it's 30 years and 299 days. Brings us to October 19th. Now that's going to be Iran's 45th birthday in, which year was it? Just going to check that again. Last year. Last year. So you turned 45 last. So it's in 2022. Now, we had in these lines, we had Stephen's birthday, my birthday. Now we have Ron's birthday. So, and that is if we're counting from uh, December 25th. McDonald. So if we count from, so I'm going to just show you here on these uh, calendar converter. So what we have here is we have November 9th, December 25th. It's 777 inclusive days. I have September 11th in here. I have December 25th, 2023, which is tomorrow. I have this April 8th, April 10th, and in 2024, and April 5th in 2030. And then we talked about <coughs> the phrase King of the North. So the phrase King of the North is 11,256 days. And that's going to bring us to October 19th of uh, 2022. It's also the 23rd day of the seventh month, which is a symbol that we have, but it's also Iran's birthday. So, um, so that, that's in there. Okay. Now we also have, uh, the king of the north shall come. So that the word shall come. Let me show you here. So the king of the north shall come. That's verse 15. The king of the north shall come. So we got a, another number that we could add to that. So if I take 11,256 and I add 935, I'm going to get 12,191. I think that's what I get. 12,191. Now, if I go from... Um, let's see here. So I'm just got to go back to this chart for you guys. <clears throat> now, if I if I count the number of days, um, that is, the King of the North shall come, and I count from November 9th, 1989, it's going to bring me to March 27th, 2023. Now, again, it's a symbolic date. Are we, we claiming anything about that something happened on March 27th, 2023? It just brings us to a, a symbolic date in our time, right? So these are symbols. Not every date is a symbol, but the fact that it says the king of the north shall come. Now, the king of the north shall come. Why? What, what happened that the king of the north shall come? We have the Battle of Raphi and the Battle of Panean. The King of the North shall come in verse 15 is in connection with the Battle of Panean, right? Is our history just in a general sense, 1989, is it symbolized by the Battle of Panean? And is 1798 symbolized by the Battle of Raphia? I would think so. Okay. I thought it was. Yeah. So, so we didn't, you know, before a few weeks ago, I mean, maybe a week ago, we never had really clarified that point that it, was, it wasn't it wasn't put in that way, even though it was there, right? Because we could see that um, that the history is is being repeated, and so we know the king of the south defeated the king of the north in 1798. And the king of the north defeats the south king of the, uh, the south in 1989. So here we have the king of the north shall come, and if we does the King of the North come on November 9th, 1989? We would have to say yes. And But if we take that phrase, the Hebrew numbers, it brings us to March 27th, 2023. That's going to be two years to the day from the March 27th. That's part of um, the 777 structure, right? So is that significant that it marks March 27th, 2023? That is, are we connecting what happened in the 777 structure as what is happening now 
Is there a connection between what happened within those that period from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021? Was there a parallel? So what I'm going to do here with this chart is just put some of these dates in here. And, and what we find is it creates like a matrix. That is, as we put together these dates, here, just put the 30 years. I'm just going to put in these different way marks. Okay. So we start to put more dates in here. And, and we start to get relationships between these dates. Obviously, some of the dates are the same dates, right? November 9th, 1989 is also November 9th in 2019, right? So those are, um, and that 30 years there is 10,957 days. Now, remember, we have that in um, the story of Deborah and Barack, I believe it was, I'm trying to remember, uh, where we had the 30 years being marked by that number. I'll find it here in a minute. Yeah, that was in um, of the story of Jephthah, right? That was with the Shibboleth. And um, so Jephthah, his number for his name was 3316. And they're going to have that Shibboleth that's connected with him. And you add the two together, 7641, Capricars, related to Capricars constant. And you get 10,957, which is exactly 30 years, right? So, so we had that, that symbol in there. There was also, uh, so I'm just looking at each of these dates. So more of these dates, uh, relate to these lines. I'm just trying to remember all these numbers. Okay. So we put these dates in here. So we have a repetition of dates. Now we can see, oh, that's the other date I need to put in there. I knew there was one more. So when we put December 25th, we can see, of course, we have December 25th, 2023. That's going to be the 8141 inclusive days. Uh, that's the word years. Um, we have the both of these March 27ths in here. This one's marked by the King of the North shall come. We have just the King of the North expression that brings us uh, to here, 11,256 days after this. And then we have um, so these two to December 25th, 2021. One other thing I was trying to think of, but I can't remember it right now. Okay, so if we go back here, uh, the king of the north shall come, right? Oh, the question was, why would we connect this to April 5th, 2030? I mean, if we're going to look at a verse, uh, wouldn't it connect us to um, the last date that we have there uh, connected with that? Wouldn't it connect us to March 3rd, 2023, March 27th, 2023? Wouldn't it connect us with that date? fifth of Nisan in 2023. So a date that's passed. Now we have, the, he shall come and cast up a mount. So what did we do with this casting up a mount? Okay, so if we add these numbers, but, you know, I wish people would remember all this, but okay, so if we add these numbers together, so we're just going to take casting up a mount, right? So this is 8210 plus Five 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 zero. Oops, got the eight there. So it's thirteen thousand seven hundred and sixty. But this one becomes a little bit more obscure, right? But but we place this number as going from the meeting that um, the last meeting that John Paul II and I guess it'd be the second meeting and Reagan had before the fall of the Soviet Union, right? So they had this meeting on June 6th, 1987. That's going to be 13,760 days to my 62nd birthday. So we had my birthday day, February 6th, 2025. 
does that matter at all? Everything matters, Theodore. So, so what would be the significance of my birthday there? It places you in the in the lines. To want okay. <clears throat> but, but but why would I want to be in there? So we know that my birthday is if we take the expression the king of the north and the king of the south, we get twenty one thousand seven hundred and twenty nine. That is, I'll show you this here. So, um, so we take four four two eight. That's the word for king. We multiply it by two, and then we take uh, the word for uh, north. And I can't, it's um, 6828. I should remember that one. It's easy. And then I add those together. And then I take uh, the expression for the king of the south. So the king of the south is um, 5045. Did something wrong. I always do that. Four two eight times two plus six eight two eight plus five zero four five. There it is. Twenty thousand. Uh, yeah. So twenty thousand seven hundred and twenty nine. So um, if we do that as a, a count, that brings us from my birthday to November 9th, 2019, right? Now, on the chart, it's going to say uh, 20,730. So this is an exclusive count. From the from the end of the day that when I was born, it's 20,729 days to November 9th, 2019. So my birthday is marked there. And, and it's going to end with uh, this king of the north shall come and he shall cast up a mount. Right? So shall cast up a mount is going to give me this 13,760. So that's 8210 plus 5550. Okay. So he's going to cast up a mount. And then he's going to take the most fenced cities. Now, have we dealt with the, the numbers in the most fenced cities yet? So we're, we're going to do that. We're just going to see what we get. 39... Uh, two zero. So three nine two zero. One thing you'll notice is uh, what is that number similar to? Similar to three ninety one point five. It's just five different. Okay, but this number itself, if we look at a span of time, is a span of ten years and about um, two hundred and seventy some days, two hundred and sixty seven point five days. Right. So just on its own, it's, it's, um, it is 10 years now. So you're going to have, um, so that's take, right? So that's 3920. Now, and it could be that we could fit that word somewhere in these structures already, but I don't know. But, uh, 329, 3920 plus a fenced is 4013. So you're going to have Another, um, less, that's going to be more than 10 years. So it's going to be another, you know, 100 days, something like that. You get this number, 7933. And then you go got cities. So 5892 plus that plus 392. Okay, so we get 13,825. Divide that by 365.25. I know this is tedious stuff, but again, we get a 37 year period. So it's 37, almost 38 years. So this number here is 325. So if we count from November 9th, 1989, we're going to add one thing to this. So, so this number that we had with all of these was, so he shall cast up a mount 
and take the most fenced cities. So take the most fenced cities we had as, um, so I'm going to do this again. Actually, I'm going to do this. Stay in a second. So there's 15. So she will cast up a mount. I shall take uh, as in a trap uh, the cities of, of fortification, right? And then you're going to have um, and the arm of the south. Now, we looked at the arm of the south. What did the arm of the south give us before we come back to this? Anybody remember about the arm of the south? The arms of the south. So that was H2220 plus H5045. Right. So remember, it gave us 19.89 years and 4.26 hours. Right. When we divided it into you know, Julian or Gregorian years. So 19.89 years. So the arms of the south lead us to 1989. Correct. I believe that was our conversation, yes. Okay. Okay. So we're, so we're brought to uh, 1989. So 1989 always leads us back. I shouldn't say it always, but it usually leads us back uh, to November 9th. Okay. And then we have this number, uh, which is uh, 13,000. Or did I get it here? No, it was 20,729, right? That was the king of the north, the king of the south. And then we had another number, which was uh, 13,825. So 13,825. And so 13,825. So I'm going to go back there now again. Divided by 365.25 gave me 37 years. Oops. What did they have here? I'll do this one. 13, 825 divided by 360. Sorry about this. This can be a little bit tedious to do. So it's 37 years. It's 300, 260, 310, and it's almost 311 days. Okay. And... I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Okay, so if I go back from, okay, so if I do 13825 from November 9th, it's going to bring me to September 16th, 2027, which doesn't mean anything. Okay, I know why. So we need some other dates in our lines because we're going to have these dates that go back to go back to this history before 1989. So that's why. And now I remember. Okay, so so when we go 13, 825. So the first time that the, the Pope, okay, so we're going to have the Pope meeting Jimmy Carter. That's going to be, I'm going to go here. So this is kind of jam-packed with dates. So we're going to go back here. So October 6, 1979, uh, the Pope is going to meet Jimmy Carter, um, Pope John Paul II. That's his first meeting with an American president. And if I go 13, 825, <clears throat> that's going to bring me to August 12, 2017. It was an inclusive count, August 11th, 2017, right? Um if I go from the first time that John Paul meets Reagan, that's going to bring me to April 13th, 2020. So not really a significant date there. Now, they're going to meet five years later on June 6th, 1987. And if I do 13, 8, 25 from that date, Brings me to April 12th in 2025. <clears throat> Nissan 13. 
So whether any of these are, are, you, are you talking about Carter or Reagan? First was talking about Carter, then Reagan. Okay. So that uh, the two dates. So we got um, we got here. We got um, June seventh, nineteen eighty two. That's with Reagan, and then um, June sixth, nineteen eighty seven. That's with Carter. Um, here I'm just going to see this. So Reagan Reagan um, met with the Pope before he became president. Uh, really? Is that? <clears throat> it's not before he became president. Well, didn't he become president in 1980? Yeah, so in 1982. The, the other time in in, in 79, you, that's going to be you, Carter. You said, yeah, but you said 79. 70, that was, that was with Carter. That was with Carter in 79. Okay. Yeah, so here... When Reagan met Pope, met Pope John Paul II. So June 7th, 1982. That's going to be the first time. Okay. Um, so. So anyway, we, we had looked at this before. Anyhow. I know that there's something that I'm missing. So I, I forgot about, um, some things, but. Anyway, when we look at this, uh, these verses, so let me go back here. In, uh, and our time's almost up. So in verse 15 of Daniel chapter 11, so we're going to spend a bit of more time on looking at verse 15 like we did with, so we have this expression, the king of the north. We also have, um, you know, casting up a mount. I need to put probably all these Hebrew words in here. We're going to examine them all. And see how these spans of time fit together. The arms of the south. That one ended up connecting. The arms of the south ended up giving us that symbol 1989. Now, now I was looking at this as, as well in connection with my baptism. So it does connect my baptism with that history as well. Um, because I was 19.89 years old when I was baptized. But anyway, uh, <coughs> so uh, let me see here. And of course, I'm baptized December 25th, which is an important symbol. So anyway, we're going to have to look at this. So we're going to have to look at all of these words here in verse 15, just like we did with verse 14. But if we just look at it this at, at the surface, we understand that the king of the north, that's Antiochus the third, he's going to be there in 200 BC in the Battle of Panea, right? He casts up a mount and takes the most fenced cities. That's going to represent the apostate churches. Right now, now the king of the north here, um, when he he casts up a mountain, takes the most fenced cities. We're saying it's republicanism of the U.S. So that is, uh, the Protestant churches are connected to politically to the Republican Party. Right? But that's going to happen in in a history that's future. So. We, we say that it's April 5th. That's one of the things we're trying to establish here. But let's just look at, at the, the initial application. That's because, um, and the arms of the South are not going to stand, right? Egyptian army by Ptolemy V does not stand up. It loses the Battle of Panea. So, so that is something that in our history is still future. And, we have different ways of looking at. It. So the first thing that we started with is this idea that we can take these verses and they end the history of Greece. And they begin the history of Rome and that they show events in our history ending with the Sunday law, that this, they show our line ending with the Sunday law. But they also show the start of our line. Right. So that's what we're going to have to try to reconcile. So I know it's a little bit scattered today, a little bit detailed. Um, 
So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to put this into a picture that we can see. So I'm going to try to spend some time uh, today doing that. Um, I don't have a lot to do today. Um, so I'm going to try to see if I can figure out a way to do this. Because I want us to see this clearly. Because when I show you these charts, I mean, this just become a bunch of numbers, right? They're not, you can't see the events per se. So I want you to be able to see these events and, and to understand how these are fit together. Any final thoughts before we close this prayer? Not right now. Okay, well, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. We just ask for your continued presence. Um, thank you for each person that participates in these studies and help us to grow and to learn and to understand. Bring us together again to study your word according to thy will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.